I'm Dan Johnson. Today I'm talking with Daniel Perez, the Chief Operating Officer of Quicksilver Aeronautics. I logged uh, more than a year with the company now and you've done a lot of good things with some new websites and social media and other things. But possibly your biggest news is what we're standing in front of. This is the special light sport aircraft Quicksilver. Yep. We know this airplane. All the people watching this video probably go, oh, I know the Quicksilver. It's actually the top seller in our kids. Of the, 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 and this I mean, is the 2S it's a, it's a with very the struts well, here, of course. Very so. well known aircraft in the field, yeah. So now you're taking it to the next level and you know, this airplane has got it and its siblings, I'll call them, more than 15,000 airplanes flying. It's the kit aircraft success story of all time. You've had to meet a new taskmaster. The sure. ASTM standards, which govern light sport aircraft, not easy, right? It is not easy. I mean, when you actually read the standard, the ASTM standard, especially the design and engineering standard, it's very demanding. It's very demanding, and then you need to, um, in order to comply with that, you need to do a lot of testing. I mean, hours and hours and hours of testing and digital simulations, physical testing, put the structure into tremendous pressure in order to prove that your aircraft is it's, it's ready to, uh, the same to, as, to be a, as all an the other specialized for right. as all the other ones. Right. Yeah. So these carbon so, fiber airplanes that look so, like so they're it's just a, it's, really so it's, a, it's a top standard to me. This has it's to meet a, the same ones that they all do. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, let's look at a couple of things that you had to do. There's, there's a lot of tests, as you said, yeah. and, and uh, you've hired Streamline Designs, which is one of our premier uh, consulting companies, and Adam Morrison and Severin Kemp and his team there, their team. Uh, they they know their stuff very well, and Adam, in your press conference, yes. ran through some, I forgot how much it was, a thousand drawings, and a, a lot no, of big numbers, amazing, like, yes. wow, that's a lot of work you did. Yes, it is. People don't know that, and they don't want to hear all the detail, but they want to know they're buying a good airplane. Sure. So let's, look, let's go back in the rear of the airplane and look at a couple of things that you had to do, just as part of this overall big process. Yeah, one thing, Dan, that I want to emphasize is that, um, it was, it was amazing that the structure of this aircraft could actually bear all these difficult testing with just minimal changes. So we're back here in the rear of the airplane now. There's a couple of parts of it that we want Daniel to show us in meeting these difficult ASTM standards. You said something about you had to reinforce the uh, landing gear legs and do some more work there. Yeah, uh, we need to reinforce part of the landing gear. So that was one of the changes. That, it's not that we have had any problems in the past. I mean, well, yeah, that the yeah, 15,000 owners it's, it's, landing it's, these it's, things all the time. It's, it's, it's a pretty demanding standard. But we now you've got a numerical thing you've got to meet. Exactly a certain right. amount of weight at a certain point. That is correct. Okay. So we need to reinforce this part of the aircraft. Okay. And uh, now it's, it's meeting the standard. We are in the la last phases. Just, the you've testing. been doing this for months, right? Oh yeah. yeah. I mean, we started this all this process about a year ago. So now we're looking at the tailplane. Again, something that has been flown this way, the way it looks here has been common for many years. But when you put a lot of weight on this, other things happen. Tell us a little more about that, Daniel. Yeah, one of I mean, the, the ACM standards, I mean, you need to put, you know, a lot of different uh, tough conditions for the aircraft. And one of those that you need to put a lot of weight here. Okay. All this load, you should be able to control the aircraft. Ah, okay. And that caused a problem? That that caused a problem in terms of we need to for this reinforce right this push-pull tube, okay, okay, with a stronger material, you know. Because pitches. when the tail was loaded and the pilot tries to actuate you, you it. You still need to be able to actuate. To fully move it, even under a high load. Exactly right. Yeah. Normal right? flying conditions, no, nothing will happen. But, I mean, the ASTM standards, it covers all, a lot of, a series of difficulties that may, you may experience while flying, okay? And you need to simulate those very the worst extreme, the, the worst, the worst case. cases, and it's still be able to control the right. Then what happens? You've got to do some test flying, right? We need to do some flight testing. Okay. We'll be uh, sent uh, to our uh, sales manager is in Minnesota. Okay. We're right. going to conduct the flight testing over there. Flight testing is also very demanding in the standard. It, in fact, they just revised the standard, and uh, uh, after December, a hundred hours of actual. Wow, is that right? Flight, it's 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 mandatory. The flight testing, well, the lapse time for that it's 
three to four weeks. Yeah, just to get, and that's flying and, and that, every day. And, that's, and that's the last part of the certification. At, right after that, we're ready to receive the FAA. Uh, and you, they are uh, scheduled to be in our factory sometime in September. In September, so. Towers in the, yeah, it's, it's around the corner. So why are you going through all this trouble with an airplane that people already knew and loved? That's a key question, right? <laughs> <laughs> why are you going through all this struggle? I think, I mean, we wanted to have in our portfolio a special light sport. I think that the market needs an affordable special light sport. And uh, we strongly believe that our Sport 2S is well positioned to fulfill that niche in the market. So a lot of individuals, I mean, we hear this all the time, how come all these light sports are so expensive? You're going to affect that for the average user that just wants a nice little airplane to fly around in. Correct. But also, flight schools. And especially those flight schools, we're out here in the ultralight area of AirVenture, and there's a lot of airplanes out here that attract people because of their low price, but how do they learn to fly them? Exactly right. With a special light sport aircraft, your, your dealers and flight schools and others can, can, can charge people uh, a going rate to teach them how to fly this, which skill they can then use to fly lots of other ultralights Absolutely. if they want. Or hopefully you'll hope a bunch of quicksilver. Oh yeah. <laughs> I would like to mention that we're going to have some important discount to our dealer network okay. or training centers. I mean, if you want to become a training center, ah, so flight school will get a better deal. Flight school will get a better deal because Excellent. we want these aircraft to be used in flight schools. Excellent. As in in in, in the past with quicksilver, quicksilver was you know the most used plane in flight schools. 15 years ago. Oh, yeah, for, for, for as long as I can remember, and I've been and in this business a long time. We want to recover that. But we strongly believe that we need to have this aircraft affordable for the flight schools. They do a lot of training, put many more people in the air, and not just for Quicksilver, I and mean, the whole industry will sure. benefit for that. Also, we're planning to offer, after the certification, also kits. ELSA okay. kits. ELSA though, right? kits. Which means okay. the dealer, you can ship a kit to a dealer, and a dealer who's qualified with you in some way can, put it can do the assembly, and that's fine. Yeah, but that's that's fine for the customer who doesn't want to build. It's fine for the dealer because may charge for that job. Okay, so that's also right. The dealer has an opportunity to make a little money, which is a reason a to work money. with Quicksilver. Absolutely, so. absolutely. So, the, so you're not the only guy doing this at Quicksilver. You're not the lone <laughs> sure. ranger out there. Sure. You got a pretty good team with you. Why don't you introduce your partners and your sales manager? Absolutely, Will. Hey. This is Willis Gutierrez, yeah, my are you? partner, is the president of the company. And you guys have been friends a long time, haven't you? Yeah, what, for 30? more than 20, 25 oh, years. I think it's almost 30. 30. Oh, I thought, I thought it was, <laughs> we it was less than that. We it counting. was less than that. <laughs> <laughs> you don't look old enough for that. And who else is this? It's Todd Ellison, our sales manager. And you can tell he's a sales manager because all you have to do is scan his shirt and you get all the information you need. So pretty good. Will is the president of the company, Todd is the sales manager, uh, and you're going to be doing some of the test flying work, are you? Yes, that's right. All right. Start right after the show. So you're going to be, you've been a busy guy, you're going to stay a busy guy, and uh, Will, you also work with the dealer program very significantly, right? Yeah, we're still in the process of uh, launching, relaunching this uh, dealer program, and we hope to uh, increase the number of dealers uh, in our chain. So hopefully, we're going to do this year better, much better. Well, I think the uh, special light sport aircraft product is going to help that quite yeah. a bit, and give your dealers more opportunities to make money, as we discussed earlier. Well, you've also got another project in the works, too. We don't want to leave out the GT500. We'll talk about it in a separate video, but that's also going through this same process, isn't it, Daniel? Yes, yes, the GT500, it's, a, it's, a, it's an aircraft already possesses a primary category <laughs> certification, but we also wanted to have it as a light sport, okay? So I would say quite in parallel with the sport to You've been already working on it. Yes, yes. We, yeah, yeah. It's less testing because of the primary category certification, but believe it or not, the ASTEM standards, it's, it's in some cases even more demanding. Is that right? It's even more demanding. So we're doing that testing. Uh, we're planning to be to have the aircraft certified towards the end of the year. Okay. Well, congratulations to the whole Quicksilver team here. You've been working hard at this. You've been spending some precious money. Uh, it's going to come back to you, I'm sure, <laughs> because we need a product like this. So. Well, we're talking today with Todd Ellison, the sales manager for Quicksilver Aeronautics with Will Escuccia, the president of the company, with Daniel Perez, the chief operating officer. Where do we find more information about Quicksilver on the web? We'll put it on the screen. Just give us your web address. It's quicksilveraircraft.com. Quicksilveraircraft.com. Easy. 
My name is Dan Johnson. I've got information about all these airplanes and many more light sport aircraft and light kits. You can find that on bydanjohnson.com or bydanjohnson.com. Thanks so much for joining us here today.